Well, it worked the first time, but not the second time. But it does, I think, pretty well underscore where the Wild were at heading into this game. Uh, the Wild pull Philip Gustafson in OT. They do not secure a point against the Vegas Golden Knights here today. And um, in reality, a game that the Wild needed to find a way to finish in regulation, and they couldn't. But some great takeaways from today's game, I think. Murat Huznadinov had a really fun game today. Philip Gustafson was great. And so uh, let's dive right in and uh, discuss a 2-1 to overtime loss for your Minnesota Wilds. Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast officially underway. The Doctor will see you now. You are Locked On Wild Postcast, part of Locked On Minnesota on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Minnesota Wild fall 2-1 to one in overtime to the Vegas Golden Knights here today, and because the Wild went empty net, in overtime they do not secure a point against Vegas here in this one. And uh, that means that the Minnesota Wild are currently sitting – and I'm seeing in the comments that uh, ESPN has given the Wild a point. But the Wild are currently sitting eight points behind the Los Angeles Kings for the second wild card spot. They are 11 points now behind the Vegas Golden Knights. And it, it is just at this point, again, I, I don't believe the mathematical elimination will come here today, but it's... It's monumental odds at this point to be able to overcome. But let's not overlook the fact that um, this was fun. This was a fun game today. And uh, the Wilds brought it against the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, as Judd Zolgad, um, as Judd Zolgad pointed out on Twitter, you have a few more games like this sprinkled in throughout the season. And we are... Uh, we're probably having a different conversation, but there just have been too far and few in between uh, for the types of games that um, the wild need to have the battle level you need to have against teams like this. And this was a tense game. It's a tight game all the way through Jack Eichel Spears. Um, Kirill Kaprizov gets a five minute penalty and then a game misconduct. He gets shown the door. The Wilds capitalize on that with Kirill Kaprizov scoring on a nice give and go from Matt Boldy. Um, 37th goal of the season for Kaprizov. Vegas ties it up with about six minutes left. And it just felt like at that point, um, it, it just, there was really no other way for this game to go other than to be settled in regulation. You just like, you, you can't keep giving points to the teams in front of you in the standings. And so we saw Hines pull Philip Gustafson in OT, which by the way, um, Gustafson was great today. I, I thought this was one of Gustafson's better games of the season. He did get beat by that, uh, that one timer from Amadio to tie the game at, uh, at one apiece. But Gustafson was great today. That was great to see because it's been a, um, it, it's been a real uneven season for him. And so glad to see him get back on track. But I want to spend a lot of time talking about Murat, who's Nadine off here today, because I watched every shift that he took and really focused on him. Um, and so had a chance to watch what he did throughout the night. And I was glad to see at the end of the game when it counted that Murat was rewarded for his strong play. And him and uh, Rossi flipped in the lineup. And here's here's the key thing here. Here's the key thing in why Huznadinov was bumped up to the top line and why um, Rossi was, was switched. It was not anything that Rossi did in particular. I, I think it was just Murat earning an opportunity to get a higher chance in the lineup at that point in the game. And so the fact that he got thrown in with uh, with Zuccarello and Hartman there at the end of the game when the Wild were trying to reclaim the lead, loved it. And I think 
one of the things that I enjoyed most about watching who's Nadinov here today was just seeing, especially on defense, if he wasn't getting involved in a puck battle um, along the boards, his default setting was to just go to the front of the net and help Gustafson out. I love that his instincts um, just told him to go to that point of the net as opposed to simply just kind of standing around and waiting to see what was happening. Um, he ended up, you know, he he just slid to the front of the net to try to keep things clean in front of Gustafson. I love that he uh, he did that, but we saw a bunch of other stuff from, from Who's Nadinov tonight here too. He's got some really, really nice stick handling abilities. He put a couple of Vegas players on skates um, at points throughout this game. He had a couple of nice shots, one in which uh, the Wild forced a turnover at the top of the zone and the action was swung way down onto the, the far side or the near side of the zone. And Who's Nadinov was coming in on the play off the bench and the Zuccarello, I think um, was the one that sent the puck uh, to the far side and who's Nadinov gets the puck. He steps up and he just lets it rip. And it was a shot that sailed over the top of the net, but I, I just, it, it's so fun to watch him play because he just, he continues to just motor. He had a great opportunity on the, on the, the other side of the ice where he kind of sprung free in front and uh, Marcus Johansson was able to get him the puck. He tried to go back. He tried to go between the legs backhand and he did get it through Logan Thompson's five hole. It just hit the post and, uh, and didn't get in. So it, the, the opportunities for who's Nadinov, you know, if he continues to play like this, the opportunities are going to be there. He is going to score. I thought he, Marcus Johansson thought that he did um, on that play. It just missed the post. And what more do you say about Kirill Kaprizov, who was just, he was in man possessed mode here today. Um, had the goal, had a couple of others, if not for some really, really solid play from, um, from Logan Thompson in this one. Uh, Thompson was really the only reason that this game kept um, at a 1-1 score. Uh, the thing, though, that is a continuing trend for this team is the Wild had a half dozen, probably, um, odd man rush or breakaway opportunities, and they were not able to capitalize on any of them. Um, it, you, you, need to, you need to finish on one of those opportunities, and... Johansson had one. Vegas got a couple of sticks in to knock the uh, the puck off his stick before he could get a shot going. Um, Hartman had the one where he was legit pushed into the net, like he was he was pushed into Thompson. That, that's that's how it that's what happens. And so not being able to capitalize on that one, uh, Boldy had a couple. Uh, there, there were a lot of odd man rush and breakaway opportunities for the wild here today. And they were not, um, they just were not able to capitalize. And you, you get to this point in a game, um, you get to this point in the season and you lose a game like this. Those are the things that you point to. I'm going to be real honest. I have, I honestly, I, I like the decision by John Hines to, uh, to go empty net in, um, in overtime because you absolutely have to have both points and anything less than that. Your season is teetering on the brink. Anyway, you're on absolute life support for the postseason, And so anything less than two points is not going to do it here today. And so I, again, I applaud the aggressiveness, um, it's something that we have not – We would Dean Evison wouldn't have done it the first time, let alone Hines doing it twice. And so um, I just – I don't know. I, I like – I continue to like what we see. I know there are gripes about um, how the young players have been utilized, but it, it's just – there's just such a difference um, – for how John Hines 
manages a game and operates a game compared to where Dean was at. Like I, I loved getting who's Nadine off an opportunity at the end of the game to play with Zuccarello and Hartman. Um, that's not something that Dean would have done. So I, I like to see those types of things. Again, this underscores what we've seen all season is that this wild team is good enough when they're on to compete, but they're just, they are not good enough to consistently hang with those top teams in the standings. And so it's just another in a long line of instances in which this team has had chances. They just have failed to capitalize on them. And that's, that's just the reality of the situation. I mean, I, I honestly, like just, I, I thought today's game was very entertaining. It was a fun battle between these two teams. It got tense. It, um, you, you could sense, you could sense the urgency of the moment, which is something that we haven't seen a ton of down the stretch here. So that's kind of my 10 cents, 15 cents on, uh, what we saw here today. Um, I would love to dive into the comments here and we will. Uh, so keep them coming. If you have anything that you'd like to talk about in particular, if you didn't like the decision to pull Gustafson and OT fire them up in the comments and uh, we will get to all that and more as we continue tonight's locked on wild postcast. Again, the Minnesota wild lose two to one in overtime uh, and uh, thus not able to get either point in tonight's game. We'll continue your comments on tonight's Locked on Wild postcast after this. Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at eBay Motors. Dot com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Minnesota Wild lose 2-1 to one in overtime to the Vegas Golden Knights. And um, unfortunately not able to pick up either point here in this one today. So let's get to your comments for uh, today's game. Amanda starts us off, was not surprised, but greater good was on full display. Solid games for Murat Huznadinov, more than solid game. I thought Murat Huznadinov was great tonight. Uh, Marco Rossi had a couple of good opportunities in this one uh, here this evening. And your top-level guys, Kaprizov, Eric Zanek, and Boldy, um, that line continues to drive the bus. It's just a matter of everything else. And so, you know, Rare positive spin for me. Like, you've got, if we start to turn our attention towards next year and beyond, you've got a top line that can play with just about anybody. Kaprizov, Erickson, I can boldy. That line, that line tracks. That line has some, uh, they got some pizzazz to them. So that's an ingredient that you need down the road. But you need to get everything else ironed out. You need to get that second line figured out you need to get that third line figured out and as i'm seeing in the comments too and we'll talk about this specifically it's starting to look like there is some depth down the middle which is something that we have been just clamoring for um for the last few years like if you can continue to get if you've got a foundation here for rossi that he can build off of if marat who's nadinov continues to take those steps forward all of a sudden you got Eck. Rossi, who's Nadinov in your uh, as as your top three centers. I uh, I don't really I don't really have a reason to dislike that. So there there are there are things down the line 
that are starting to uh, starting to line up a little bit, but there obviously is still a lot that needs to be sorted out before this team is a legitimate playoff contender. Like it's not it, it's not as simple as this is one this team is one player away. There are a lot of things that uh, that need to get ironed out, but we're starting to see some of them get sorted out. Um, you know, as we move through the rest of this season. Hoptics, welcome to the other side. Uh, Hoptics shifting his reasons for watching the remaining games to hoping Faber gets a uh, ton of points and increases his plus minus Faber tonight. Where's Brock Faber at tonight? Of course, I went off of the, uh, the box score here this evening. Uh, let's go back to it. Faber finished the night as a minus one, and it was because he got um, it was because he was the defenseman on the ice for that uh, odd man rush, that two on one that Vegas ended up scoring on. Um, and then he was out there as well when uh, when Vegas scored an OT. So minus one, but he did get he did get an assist. Couple of shots, couple of blocks, 24 minutes, 37 seconds of overall ice time uh, in this one here today. So, um, you know, just Faber just continues to uh, to put together a real solid, um, solid season. Very, very solid season. Better than solid. Jared joining us. I'm okay with the loss. They played good the entire game. Yeah, again, this was it was a fun battle between these two teams. It's just as we've seen pretty much all season, um, just not a, uh, not enough to get it done at the uh, end of the day. Solid game. Mike had predicted 38, 36, and 8. That might come down to the literal wild that. Because um, what are the wild at right now? They're 35, 28, and 10. So they're 35 and 38 right now. That's it. It's going to be very similar to that. Just a couple more OT losses mixed in. Any idea why Faber is not on the top power play? I think, um, you know, I, I see the response here that uh, you're not trying to throw 30 minutes a night at him. I mean, Declan Chisholm has Declan Chisholm has played well in that spot. And so it, it could just be that the team feels that Chisholm gives them a, you know, just a better look on that unit. Um, and Faber's still kind of learning how to operate in that spot. So I think both of those probably play into that. Um, but I, I think there is a little bit to Chisholm playing well on that top spot that, uh, that has led to Faber being um, on power play number two. ESPN said 2% chance at the start of the game, and I think it was 5% on Money Puck. So I think that is probably the last possible option. Let's see. Let's just see where the um, – if it'll even show us here. Oh, and Money Puck's deserve to win. O-meter had the uh, Minnesota Wilds. Oh, it's still tracking here. It's got the Wild at, like – 76.6% chance, but this is what playoff teams do is they take punches like the Vegas Golden Knights did. They get one opportunity that goes their way and they capitalized on it. We get the game to overtime and then they, they win. Like that's, that's just how, that's just how things play out. Um, the wild were at 4.9% before the game. Um, they're down to 1.3 on money puck. 1.3% if they uh, lose their next game in regulation, which they basically did because of not getting a point in OT. So it's down to 1.3% at this point in the season, which is like all that's left is for NHL to say have officially been eliminated from playoff contention. So Gus looking steady lately. Love to see that. Yeah, let's look at what Gustafson's numbers. I think ESPN said that he was 3-0-1 in his last four starts heading into this one here. And um, you add in tonight that in 63 minutes, he only gave up one goal. Uh, his numbers 
are now um, in his last one, two, three, four, five starts. He is still 3 and one but a goals against average of 1.53 and a save percentage of 942. So weird that um, – but I suppose since he wasn't in net, he doesn't mess technically get – well, he'll get the OT loss right there. So 3-0 and 2 um, in his last five starts. And he's he's starting to round into form. Um, I think there's a lot that has gone into Gustafson's performances so far. Um, injury, first-time dad, um, the league starting to figure out how to play him effectively. I think a lot of that um, I think a lot of that works into why he has been so inconsistent this season, but that's something that he's going to just have to uh, to work on in the off season to say the least. Murat was one of the best players on the ice today, absolutely flying, playing with a ton of confidence. Who's Nadina finished tonight with 13 minutes, 45 seconds of ice time. Uh, he went three of six in the face-off circle, two shots. He uh, also had uh, a giveaway, too. Um, loved the stick handling that we saw from Marat here tonight. He uh, he kind of had some of that um, that Kaprizov swagger to his game today, which was great. And the fact that he got thrown in as the center with Ryan Hartman and Matt Zuccarello at the end of the game like let's let's be clear on this that was him earning the opportunity to more time and to play higher up in the lineup he earned that opportunity and so uh, glad to see that he's starting to get some of the trust of the coaching staff here down the stretch um i i just i thought it was just a lot of fun to um to watch him throughout the night here tonight a puck hound through and through, as uh, Mike notes. To beat the champ, you have to knock out the champ. Wild tried for the knockouts. They at least took a swing. Yeah, I I, I like that. Um, I, I would rather, you know, I, I'm assuming, I'm just starting to get the impression that John Hines does not like shootouts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because the the wild have only been to a couple of them since he took over. And so again, it just, it further underscores where this team was at coming into this game that they absolutely needed two points. And so you can't take the chance on a game going to a shootout. And so it's like, Hey, we get possession of the puck and uh, we're going to pull the goalie again. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. getting caught up on the uh, comments here. Rossi in our 15th pick to move up into the top five. I'd have to look into that one a little bit more. Again, it just... I. I it would depend on what you were getting back in return or what you were going to go draft. But, um, you know, now that you finally are starting to get a clear picture on that uh, down the middle, I would be hesitant to um, to try to deal from that area right as things are starting to uh, kind of get situated. Would have liked to have seen Murat in overtime. Me too. I even predicted how about um, how about Murat gets the OT winner. Well, didn't get on the ice in OT, but uh, hey, solid game nonetheless. Erickson Eck, Kuznadinov, Hartman, Height, Yurov, Kumpalainen, and others. Um, and, and again, if if these guys pan out, you're doing you're doing something similar to what. The Avalanche did in trading Bowen Byram for Casey Middlestat. If these guys all pan out, uh, then center becomes kind of a position of strength that you would deal from to fill an additional position. Defense, for one. 
Um, it's it, it it's going to be very fascinating to see how that plays out here um, in the off season. Only three things in life are certain: death, taxes, and the Minnesota Wild losing in overtime to teams that they need to beat. Needed to, got none. That's that's about uh, that's about where we're at. Yeah, if it's for a top four defenseman, which is something that like they're gonna need some help on defense for sure. Like we've seen Zach Bogosian fill in in that second pairing, but he is definitely a third pairing guy. So I'll um let's put this on the list of things to look at uh, in the off scene is and is to um what you could get for him in uh, in return. Can the Iowa Wild make up 10 points in nine games against Manitoba? I don't think so either. Um, yeah, this is, this is a good point about the OT pull, too. You wouldn't have to pull the goalie in overtime if you wouldn't have had a better start to the season. Um And we probably would not have, we wouldn't have been in a lot of situations if the Wild avoid a five and fourteen start. If the Wild avoid that one seven and one stretch in January, but ultimately, that's just that's just how it all played out, and uh, we'll have the entire off season um, to talk about it. I'm Sean. I'm not sure about this. Um, I, I, I don't know how this works because it usually takes ESPN a little bit to kind of update things in the win loss column. Uh, let me just see if they have, um, now they've pulled it off the board completely. So yeah, they, I, I think they are similarly confused as to how this plays out. I mean, he wasn't in net for the game winning goal, so I don't see how you can saddle him with the loss considering that he wasn't in net to stop that puck. So, um, interesting. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see how they play that out. Officiating. I thought, and my thought on the officiating for pretty much the entire season and for pretty much my entire run as host of this show, I think officiating is something that has benefit to both sides. Like the wild obviously got the five minute power play on the spear from Jack Eichel, who then got tossed out of the game. He got the game misconduct. So that was something that benefited the wild. I mean, yes, it was a spear. I'm not trying to discredit that it was an actual penalty, but um, the, Hartman getting pushed into the goalie one was odd. Um, there were a couple of others in which, um, like Jewel Erickson Eck getting tripped and the official was too close to the play to make the call. That was another one that, uh, that popped up. Um, the officials got involved in a couple of different instances too. And so, um, you know, the officiating is something that gets pointed to if, things don't go well but it there were i don't know I, I don't like going to the the officials are out to get us i don't like going down that rabbit hole because there are instances throughout the rest of the game in which you have the opportunity to um make plays that don't involve the officiating and so kind of going to that vein is just it's just not something i like to do but there were some interesting things in this one to uh, to say the least. The game was close. Gus was hot. Logan was getting beat up a lot in the third. The refs had to check on him strategy-wise. Holding off to the shootout might have been the way to go. Wild's playoff hopes ended as soon as OT started. Could not give Vegas a point. Yeah, 100%. Dan's right on. You just you could not have 
could not give them even a single point in this one. If Celebrini's on the board at 15 or at five, he's worth 15 in Rossi. Other than that, no thanks. X had a good crowd. There were a lot of Vegas fans that traveled for this one, which, you know, it's it's always fun to get the opposition rowdy, but um, the Wild fans, especially early, they were uh, they were into it, just needed some goals to uh, to get going. And, um, you know, once Kaprizov scored, place went nuts. That's just, I don't know. At this point in the season, I think everybody's kind of on the same page as to where we're at and uh, where things are going to go. Um, yeah. Three and three OT as it is stinks. I could not agree with Dougie Moore here. Um, I you see teams too often just turn it into a possession, a five minute possession. Like the Wild did the same thing at the start. They controlled the puck, although this OT was just just chaotic. You had players running into each other for both teams, um, nearly just handing the puck to the other team. But by and large, you see teams value possession more than they do actual shots. There's got to be something done about it. It's 3-on-3 OT is supposed to be exciting, but so often you see teams just hold on to the puck and play for maybe one or two shot attempts, and that's it. Like There's going to need to be... Um, there's going to need to be something done, whether it be like if you carry the puck pass, if you enter the zone and you back out, I, I don't know what you do, but it feels like something has to be done to, um, to just turn this into like, Hey, let's actually go try to score the puck. Um, as opposed to just kind of hanging on to it. Gophers off to a uh, solid early start here. Um, thanks to Sean for the updates. Um, 2-0 at, um, at this point. And now 2-1. Two 2-1 to one. Two to one Gophers. When you're in a small market hockey team, your games will be managed accordingly. Hines will slowly start morphing into Evison. It is inevitable. Um. Yeah, there's definitely and there there are definitely pieces to John Hines coaching style that um Dean Evison or uh, there are pieces to Hines coaching style that mirror what Dean would do. Hines is just way more tactical in game than Dean ever was. He likes to mix things up. He's not afraid to try new things during a game. Um, he seems like he really plays face-off matchups. Um, and, I mean, again, he would never, Dean would never have pulled his goalie in OT. So I like some of that for Hines, but, um, you know, there's there's some work to be done um, as well. Why not go six on five in the last minute or two of regular... This, this would have been another good idea to try to win that game in regulation as opposed to letting it go to OT. And, you know, there there may have been some sense by the team that unless they do something like that, it's likely not going to matter. But, um, you know, urgency has been a problem all season. Just doesn't seem like there's been enough at key points. And... Um, you know that that continued uh, that continued here in this one. Um, ooh, some good ideas on three on three OT. Want to make three on three better? Get rid of the shootout. Don't allow a team to possess the puck in the offensive zone and retreat to neutral ice for the change. Shot clock. So there are there are certainly ways to um, to improve it, but. Uh, Will the NHL do anything about it is another story. Lots of discussion about who gets the C after Spurge, and you pretty much have to give it to Kaprizov. This is his team, and it would probably help him decide to play his entire career here. Oh, I see what Hoptics is saying. 
his temperament. Um, he was heated. Hines was heated a couple of times in this game too. Like at especially after the um, after the Hartman call, for sure. Like he gets at he was getting after the officials. Um, and it, like I I, I can't uh, I can't certainly blame him for that. Only change I can see happening to three on three is switching to third period benches so it's easier to change. You can get fresh guys on the ice so it's easier to create turnovers. Uh, can the NHL adjust with the goalie pull and OT to where if you do score while pulling the goalie, you eliminate the OT point for the other team or just go three point games? Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe you put that, that OT point um, completely up for grabs. That's an interesting thought, too. Um, th there are, there are options, but again, it's up to the NHL to want to, um, want to make the change. Riley Heights, folks. Um, I, I'm excited to see him in training camp next year for sure. And I would imagine that the wild will at least give him a look because at this point in his ELC, He's, I, I think because of his age, he can, if I read correctly, because of his age, he is either going back to um, juniors or he's going to be with the Wild. And it doesn't seem likely that he, unless he majorly impresses, will be with the team for the whole season. But I have no problem with rewarding a guy with a little nine-game tune-up and uh, and see what he's got it like the thing the thing at least in my head with all of these you know all these players coming in all these young players coming in is just give them opportunities to kind of see where their game is at not everybody's going to pop you know not everybody's going to stick right away but you give them an opportunity to see how their game stacks up against NHL players and you give them things then to work on. Like if you, for instance, have Adam Beckman play a few games, and he did, but play like a solid stretch of games, then he knows what he needs to work on to consistently get up to the NHL level. Um, but we just we continue to see guys just kind of chill on the bench three points to win in regulation two to win an ot and one point for an ot loss and then one for a shootout win and nothing for a shootout loss um something along those lines i i would be very in favor of that you cannot have the c on a guy that only leads by playing this team needs a no bull guy that gets in the faces of Freddie and the coasters and the penalty magnet Hartman hard nose, not nice guy. Um, a head coach that, uh, and again, I, I don't have any problem with John Hines in particular because of the stuff that he does during games, but how good of a fit would, uh, would torts be for this team in particular? Because I think he would be able to hammer home the messages that just don't seem to get through two particular guys and i mean dude benched his captain he benched his captain um to send a message to send a message that his play wasn't good enough sorry i was reading another comment that dougie just had here that i'll discuss in a second um like you i think you need somebody to I think you need somebody to just not accept all of this. And whether it's a player, whether it's a coach, um, that's kind of too that's kind of too why I'm on the train that I think there is gonna be some sort of a trade made, even with all of these even with all of these contracts locked in with um no move clauses, I think to help with just like you just have to have somebody that comes in and is not going to take what 
we've seen by and large this season. So I don't know who that would be, but that's why I just have this sneaking suspicion um, that there is going to be some sort of a trade made to shake this roster up after this type of a season. Some confusion about height because he had 20-some games in his first season in the CHL. Read that if it counts, he could play in the AHL because it would be four seasons there. Yeah, that's... That is um, what I've heard as well, Dougie. Is that there? If it is, if he's counted for four seasons, then he can play in um, in Iowa. Um, if not, then he would have to go back to um, his previous stop and put up another hundred point season um, after he gets his nine game cup of tea. What do you have to do to get rid of Goudreau with four years left? You would have to attach a pick, I think, for sure, uh, in order to get a team to take that kind of a contract on. It's not like the AAV is absolutely zero issue. It's just it's the four years. It is the um, it's the four years and it's the production that we haven't seen since that extension was signed. I mean, Goudreau had 19 goals last season. And this year he's at, I think, four. Um, That's that's not great. Like, it would just be great, especially now with, like, if you, are you really going to have Goudreau play a wing spot for this team next year on the third or the fourth line? Like I would just, I would love to free that spot up. And so if it takes, if it takes a pick to move, that could be part of the reason that we've seen Bill Guerin line up as many picks as he has in 2026, like basically double picks every, every round. Um, That could be a reason too. I I did see Sean, the, the Russo tweet that Felino is probably done for the year. Um, that's, this is, this is when you see things shift from the like win at all costs to, okay, we're out of it. Now it's time to start getting a, uh, it's time to start getting a jump on, uh, on off season surgeries and, um, and getting players healthy for next year. So Felino not being on the roster is going to be a huge loss, but Biggest thing for him is just going to be to get healthy for next season. Depends on Freddie. Depends with Freddie, I think, Dougie says. If Dean gets the job in Ottawa, he'll probably ask for uh, his favorite player to join him. Um, And I can run – let me just run the buyout here for uh, Steady Freddie um, because it. I think it tacks on – I think it tacks on eight more seasons – if you just go the straight up buyout route, but let me just check on that before I, um, before I air. So if you bought him out, it'd be 629 K every season from now to 2021, a 2031, 2032. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seasons of 629k now obviously you'd be saving 1.6 million next year you'd save 1.14 million dollars in 25 26 26 27 and 27 28 and then it would essentially be like keeping a a prospect salary on the books for those final four seasons so if you're comfortable with that um it's it's not uh, if you're comfortable with that, it's not a huge price to pay. But I kind of wonder if we, um, I kind of wonder if we see him dangled because let's not forget at the trade deadline in Michael Russo's trade deadline primer, he had Goudreau in the category of would move if an offer if they had a compelling offer. So I kind of wonder if that gets revisited in the off season. So that'll be another one to keep an eye on here um, as the season plays out. 
you take out the one seven and one stretch where we were missing all of our best players in every position. Hines has been one of the best coaches in the league from that time. Can't believe people are still saying to fire him. I think the more questions on the Hines front come from like, is he the right guy to lead you through? Cause there is still the big glaring has not as a head coach won a playoff series. Like that's a big kind of a glaring thing that will need to be addressed um, at some point, whether it be next year or the year after. I I like what Hines does. I like how he manages game flow. I think he has done a really good job with that. Um, Could we see, um, could we see, you know, some younger players get opportunities higher up in the lineup. Sure. But big key will be how does he handle playoff series? And so that's a question we can't answer until we get there. Um, so I think that's where more of the questions come in. Um, but again, can't really do anything with that at this point. Reminder that Freddie has fewer goals this season than Nico Sturm, fewer assists fewer goals, assists, and points than Jordan Greenway and has had one more goal this season than Ryan Reeves. <sighs> that just made me ill. Um, yeah, that's that's not great at all. Um, yikes. Yeah, I, I wonder if we see something done in the offseason here. Amanda is wondering if the head coach, if it is the head coach or the um, coaching staff that needs to be removed and brought in. Uh, It may be that we see him given the opportunity to add some assistance, like his guys in the offseason. I'm real interested to see what happens with Iowa, too. Because that has been like, that's been a tough year for Iowa as well. So what ends up happening there, we'll be keeping a keen eye on that here uh, throughout the offseason as well. Cap Friendly says the cap hit on Goudreau is 489K, 959 times three years, then 629 for four if you were bought out in June. It's not a huge price. It's not a huge price to pay. So I wonder if that is... I wonder if that's something that's looked at if they can't find a willing buyer um, in the offseason. Jason King was supposed to be a power play guru, and what has he done? And It's a power play that's been uneven through most of the season uh, and is kind of trending downward again at the end of the year. I, I just would like... I would like collectively if the power play could avoid these ice cold stretches and would be willing to concede in some of the stretches in which they're just red hot for just more level, consistent performance throughout the season. Um, They have been far from um, far from consistent throughout uh, the year this season. So um It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out, but uh going to be a lot of questions heading into the offseason, to say the least. If you buy Goudreau out, you should wait one more year. No reason to get the big savings next year. Wait until we should be good in 25-26. Yeah, I, I, I think... I think that'll probably be the more likely route that Bill Guerin goes. Um, is that he gives him one more year to try to see if he can rebound, and if not, um, then they'll have to they'll have to look at um, doing something. Let's see. I'm not sure, Eddie, if there is a limit. On buyouts, I know there is a limit on. Um, I know there's a limit on the slots. You have limited slots in which you can retain salary. 
there is definitely there are four i think four slots in which you can retain salary at any given time i don't know if there is a limit on buyouts though um so i'll do a little digging into that but at least off the top of my head i think that's where the limit is 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 um retaining salary I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to uh, to call it here for today. Um, reminder, we've got due to Easter Sunday, there will be no live show tomorrow, but we'll do a live show followed by a watch party next week for the, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks game. So we'll do a live show at noon and then we'll do a watch party at two. I think it's a 2.30 start against Chicago. We'll do a watch party for that game. I had said we were going to do another one, and I will deliver on that. And uh, we'll do one next Sunday against Chicago. But um, going to get on the road here from the X and um, get out to the folks to uh, to celebrate Easter here tomorrow. So thanks for all the questions here today, everybody. And uh, appreciate having the, uh, the big audience from both Locked on Wild and Locked on Sports Minnesota. Uh, here uh, in tonight's postcast. Uh, if anybody has any other questions that you would like to have answered, feel free to uh, to drop me an email, lockedandwild at uh, gmail.com, or you can drop them in our Discord server. Link is in the description for this video. So if you want to join the, uh, the Discord server, feel free. And uh, we'll be back with you with a uh, new episode of Locked and Wild on Monday. We'll talk with Alex about uh, what we saw here this weekend and going forward as well. Uh, make sure to like this video before you head out here for the day and uh, make sure to subscribe if you have not already so you don't miss out on any new content from Locked on Wild. Uh, appreciate everybody hopping in here for the postcast, including Jesse Pierce. What's up, Jesse? And uh, Minnesota Wilds come up short, 2-1 to one in OT. Here tonight, tonight's Locked on Wild postcast has been yet another production of Locked on Wild, which is part of the Locked on Podcast Network.